Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an extraordinary problem for you all today. Uh, this problem is from the 2019 IMO shortlist. So those problems were released very recently and it was number six on the shortlist for the geometry problems. So one of the harder ones and it was proposed by Slovenia. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So I is the in-center of triangle ABC. Uh, the in-circle meets BC, CE, and AB at D, E, and F. And then we draw the line EF, and we let it hit the circumcircle at P and Q, as shown. And then we want to prove that angle DPA plus angle AQD is equal to angle QIP. So not a hugely complicated configuration, but it's hard to kind of wrap your head around how to show the sort of angle sum uh, condition. All right. So one of the first things I noticed, which I feel like really is a key to uh, kicking off the solution, is that EF is the polar of A with respect to the in circle. So since AE and AF are both tangent to the in circle, uh, EF is the polar. Um, so I mentioned that in uh, video number 75 on my channel, that the line joining the two points of tangency is the polar, okay? And so P and Q have to both lie on that polar, all right? So if P lies on the polar of A, then that means that A has to lie on the polar of P. So basically the polar of P, uh, that's a line perpendicular um, to IP. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a perpendicular from A to, to IP. Um, so this is what I mentioned. Since P lies on the polar of A, then A has to lie on the polar of P. Uh, that's Lahiri's theorem, so that's also in video 75. So I'm dropping a perpendicular from A to PI, and I'm going to let I'm going to label three of the intersection points. So I'm going to label uh, G, the intersection with EF, H, the intersection with IP, and J, the intersection with the circumcircle. All right. Okay. So where do we go from here? So, um, so G, we labeled the intersection of uh, this, this line with uh, EF. So G then also has to lie in the polar P. And so we can take advantage of that fact um, because that means that we know that F, E, G, and P are in harmonic conjugation. So this is actually from video 76 on my channel, so I'm gonna write it out. So G, since it lies on EF, G is also on the polar P. Um, and so the cross ratio F, E, G, P has to equal one. So this is the first theorem in video number 76 on my channel. I forgot to write it out here. Um, but it's a, it's a super useful theorem. So I'd recommend checking out uh, video 76 if you haven't seen this before. Okay, and once we have a cross ratio equal to one, uh, then we can do lots of projections and that often helps make a lot of progress. Um, so we have F, E, G, P. What's a good point to project those four points through? So we can project point A through each of those four points onto the circumcircle. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, so if we project those four points through A onto the circumcircle, uh, P stays at P, uh, F goes to point B, uh, G goes to point J, and E goes to point C. So that's pretty convenient. So I'm going to write that out. All right, so we're projecting through A onto the circumcircle, which I've called gamma. So F goes to B, E goes to C, G goes to J, and P stays at P. And it's still equal to 1. All right, and we can do the same thing. So everything we've done, we've just done with respect to P, but we can do the exact same thing with respect to point Q. So I'm gonna do that here. So I'm gonna drop a perpendicular from A to QI, and that has to be the polar of Q um, from what I mentioned before. So now I'm gonna label the intersection points, K, L, and M, and we have to have the cross ratio B, C, MQ is equal to one. 
Okay, so where do we go from here? We have B, we have the cross ratio BCJP is equal to one, and we also have the cross ratio BCMQ is equal to one. Well, just from seeing these two, I immediately had recognized, because I'd seen this before, uh, that BC, PM, and QJ all have to be concurrent. Um, so I'm gonna prove this out here for you, but I've done a very similar proof on my channel before. Uh, so if you look at my video on Pascal's theorem, I think it was probably around video 51 or so, and you look at the video before that, um, I do a very similar thing where I have two of these cross ratios equal to one like this. And if two of the, the four points are the same, uh, but the other two are different, so and they're all points that lie on the circle, um, then that means that J, Q, and P, M have to concur on B, C. Um, so, so I just knew this right away because I'd seen it before, but I'm going to prove it out for you um, just, just for clarity. So how do we prove from these two cross ratios that that's the case? B, C, P, M, and J, Q are concurrent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let P, Q intersect B, C at a point N. Okay. And where do I go from here? So we have the cross ratio B, C, J, P. And what I can do is I can project those four points through point Q. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to hide the in circle and point D temporarily, and you'll see why later. Um, so we need we need the in circle to construct the whole problem, but but I'm going to hide it for now um, for reasons that I'll explain soon. Okay, so I'm going to take those four points. Um, so I'm actually going to start with B, C, J, and P, and I'm going to project them through point Q onto the line B, C. And I knew to do this because I'd seen it in other problems before. So um, B and C still stay at B and C. But if we project point three P through point Q, it goes to point N on the line BC. And if we project J through point Q, I'm just going to label that as uh, QJ intersect BC. So I'm not going to draw uh, the point. Okay. And then P goes to point N. So we have this cross ratio is equal to BC, and then this intersection point of QJ with BC, which I'm not going to draw, and point N. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this other cross ratio, but I'm going to project through point P instead. So if I start with BCMQ and I project through point P onto the line BC, uh, B and C stay where they are. Uh, if I connect P to point M, uh, it intersects BC at PM intersect BC. I'm just going to leave it like that. And if I connect P to point Q, it intersects line BC at point N. And the reason I did that is because now we can compare these two. They both have to be equal to one. Um, so, but BC and N are the same in these two cross ratios. So that means the third point which is, Q, which is QJ intersect BC has to be the same as PM intersect BC. Uh, that's the only way they could both equal one. Uh, so this is a very well-known fact, but if you haven't seen it, um, I'd recommend trying to prove it. All right, so QJ intersect BC is the same as PM intersect BC. Um, so what does that mean exactly? If QJ and PM intersect BC at the same point, then they have to be concurrent. All right, so now we're really getting somewhere. So I'm going to call that point R. Um, and if they all concur at point R, then this cross ratio BCRN has to equal 1. So where do we go from there? So the cross ratio BCRN is equal to one. And if you watch my first video on projective geometry on my channel, uh, if that cross ratio is one and we have EF intersecting the line BC at point N like this, then that means that uh, AR, BE, and CF have to be concurrent. Uh, so in that video, I actually proved the converse of this 
but it's not easy to show that this also, I'm sorry, it's not too hard to show that this also has to be true. Um, so, I'm sorry, ignore that. Okay, so since BCRN, since that cross ratio is equal to one, then BE, CF, and AR have to be concurrent. But E and F, those are the points of tangency of the in circle. Um, and so that means that R also has to be the point of tangency of the in circle um, because the lines connecting each vertex to the, the point of tangency of the in circle with the opposite side, those are all concurrent at the jergon point of the triangle. And if you don't know about this, it's very easy to prove by Cheva's theorem. So, um, and I do prove it also in another video. So R has to be the same as the original point D, uh, which was the point of tangency of the inner circle with BC. Um, and that's because AD, BE, and CF are concurrent. And if you'd like to see a proof of that in a video of mine, you can watch video number 29. Although it's it's not too hard to show by Cheva's theorem, uh, since the tangents BD and BF are equal, AF and AE are equal, and CE and CD are equal. All right, so R is equal to D. And so this is really enough to uh, conclude the problem just through angle chasing. All right, so I'm gonna uh, explain that here. Okay, so we want to show that angle QIP is equal to the sum of these two angles. But angle QIP, it's the same as angle LIH. Um, and and if, we, if you look at quadrilateral AHIL, that has two right angles. Uh, so we can make use of that. So angle LIH has to be 180 minus angle HAL. So I'm going to write this out. Um, so angle AHI is equal to angle ALI, which is 90 degrees. And so that's because we constructed um, those two lines to be perpendicular to IP and IQ. All right, so that means that angle QIP is the same as angle LIH, which is 180 minus angle MAJ. Uh, that's because in this quadrilateral, two of the angles are right angles. So um, since LIH, is, is one angle. The other angle has to be 180 minus uh, angle LIH. So LIH is 180 minus angle LAH, uh, which is the same as 180 minus angle MAJ. And angle MAJ, that's half of arc JM in the big circumcircle gamma. All right. And now I'm going to do another angle chase with these two angles. So angle DPA and angle AQD. All right, so angle DPA plus angle AQD. Well, angle DPA, uh, that's the same as angle MPA, now that we know that that concurrency point is point D. Uh, and similarly, angle AQD is the same as angle AQJ. And each of those are half of their intercepted arcs. Uh, so angle MPA is half of arc AM. And angle AQJ is half of arc AJ. Okay, so this is half of arcs AM plus AM plus AJ. Um, but if we try to compare these two, arc AM plus arc AJ is 360 minus arc JM, since those three arcs comprise the entire circle. So half of the sum of AM and AJ is actually half of 360 minus JM. And that is 180 minus half of JM, which is the same as angle QIP. And so that solves the problem. So for this problem, I feel like knowing about poles and polars really helped a lot with the solution. Uh, if I didn't know about poles and polars, I'm not really sure where I would have started on this. Um, and my solution, it happened to be the same solution as Evan Chen's on the forum. So I think his solution may have been the first solution posted. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the whole theory of poles and polar is really, really useful. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.